He doesn't, though. <laughs> if you treat him right, you're honest with him, he can do anything. There's nothing he can't do. <laughs> what? Even fly? <laughs> <laughs> Even fly. <laughs> and if you're very brave, he'll let you fly with him. Does that mean he can talk to? No, no, no. no. No, 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 no. Now you're being stupid. He doesn't yeah. trust anyone. Not even me? <laughs> no. No, no. Not you, of course. No. All right, then. Make him talk. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Make him talk. <laughs> Give him a chance to, to get big. No, you're lying. He can't talk. He can't because he's dead. All right. Well, that was the most disturbing audio we've ever played on this show, and I think we've had some nine one one calls where a woman dies. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Uh, yeah, it can fly. Yeah. Can, his penis oh, yeah, can fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it can fly. God, it wasn't. Both have been surprised if he was like, "Can you make him talk?" And then it was like, "Hey, little girl. Yeah. Hey, can I have some, some problems standing up? If you're not talking about maybe give me a chair or something. <laughs> Anyways, just, I'm gonna kill you." I feel like the uh, the mouse uh, in that movie Dumbo spoke about Dumbo yes. the same way. Yeah, he can fly. <laughs> yeah, if yeah, it it's also magical. felt sort of like a, a like a Cinderella vibe. I was yeah. waiting for it to turn into like you know, or like the Pottsbury clock fat man, right? From Beauty and the Beast. So that's actually a charmed version of Chickatello. That's a much charmed version. Yeah, right. and, and that you know, of course, and that was at the beginning of his career, which we right. uh, covered last week. That was more of the molesting his school children part right. of his career. But we have moved past that. We have now moved to the year 1982, in which at this point he is killed. Eight people. Right. And I want a new dog. When a woman is sick. So he's he's out. Of too, man. The <laughs> airwaves were full of Huey Lewis and the news, but right. Russia didn't get it. They just got the solemn chimes of a bell, letting everyone know that the bread ran out. Oh, I love that chime. <laughs> so he's on to his white album. Uh, he started <laughs> to take some drugs, and he's uh, he's getting a little more. A little bit more wild by the moment, huh? Well, let's talk about the victim selection that he had, mm. how he chose his victims. Because his victims were very wide and varied as far as who they were, what class they came from. I mean, because, you know, you couldn't really make a connection between a 44-year-old alcoholic prostitute mm -hmm. and the 11-year-old stamp collector. Like right. there, was, there wasn't a whole lot Unless of, you're talking about the fans of Jennifer Lawrence <laughs> <laughs> That's everybody and That's here, true and He didn't care it, It's absolutely everybody Everyone yeah. loves her Can we talk about Jennifer Lawrence for a second? <laughs> Holy lord she is one, That is a beautiful woman So it didn't matter whether it was an older woman A little boy it, it didn't matter at all who it was All he wanted to hear was screams All he wanted to see was blood He never mm -hmm. searched out specifically a woman or a boy his, all of his victims it was all at first opportunity he would just pick m people until finally one of them went off with him uh, to eventually be brutally murdered right because that's what they said too is that like literally any sign of resistance he would let it go yeah. like he mm -hmm. didn't want he didn't want any because the idea was is that I mean he couldn't get his pee pee all hard so he couldn't any, any right. anything that demasculated him he couldn't deal yeah. so if we did let's just say look at some of the nude pictures of Jennifer Lawrence that were released we'd be like we were aroused and then be like what do you like Chickatel and be like, love that movie Hostel. I've been jacking <laughs> off to that movie Hostel like nonstop. Yeah. And he killed. I just feel like maybe Russia could have used more like, you know, pumping sounds of screaming into the streets. Make it sure. more like a Halloween horror nights. Mm -hmm. And then he would have been fine. Like he would have just been hard all the time. And he would have just maybe have been president. I think, it would be, <laughs> I think it would be creepier and worse if he got off to the sounds of laughter. You know, yeah, that's more disgusting. Really? Mm, nah, not really. <laughs> he killed no heterosexual men whatsoever, as far as men goes, because first of all, men hated him. He could sweet talk <laughs> women. He could sweet talk children because you remember he didn't start killing until he was in his 40s. So he mm -hmm. had kind of a grandfatherly look about him. Uh, and the other reason why he was able to lure children and women away is because in Soviet Russia, standing in line was a fact of life. Right. You stood in line every single day. And, of course, the buses were terrible. And he mm -hmm. picked up most of his victims at bus stations. So they'd be in line together. They'd start talking. They'd uh, form a sense of camaraderie. Mm -hmm. And then he'd say, 
say, you know what? Why don't we go for a walk? The women, he would pretty much just say, like, okay, let's go relax. So that goes in Russia. He'd be like, are you miserable? And he'd be like, yeah, I'm miserable. Are you miserable? I am too. We have so much in common. Yeah. Let's go to the woods. <laughs> you, got, you got me waiting for a bus for 45 minutes. I'd much rather get my organs cut off and my nipples shot off by some fucking grandfather killer. To some degree, he was doing them a favor. And that's how bad Russia was. He was only 40. And everyone's like, Grandpa. <laughs> Uh, and, of course, he was a sadist, a complete and total sadist. Uh, and in hardcore sadists, it does make sense for them to move from heterosexual objects to homosexual objects and eventually to homosexual pedophilia. Because in their mind, that is the escalation of depravity. Mm -hmm. it's like Because they see homosexuals as depraved. Not something that's normal, but it's something that is the next step in their sexual uh, well, it's spiral. Showed, mm. It had nothing to do with to his direct direct sexuality. No. It was all about just the, the the domination and the control, which is actually very yeah. interesting because, uh, to be honest, I don't know many killers. Like, tell me if I'm wrong, that, that really switched back and forth between, like, men and women. Most of them do one or the other. Well, Ramirez was... Ramirez was just a slash and go kind of guy. Yeah. Well, you no, know, he would kill the husband in order to get to the woman. Like that was right. his, that was his his objective was the woman. The same thing yeah. with like you know, and John Wayne Gacy was all about little boys because it was hiding his sexuality. I think that's what makes Chicatello specifically so fucked up and dangerous is the fact that he was just about the violence. Yeah. yeah. It's got nothing to do with him. It's got nothing to do with the sex at all. No. And speaking of the violence, let's get into what he actually did to the victim. Victims. He ripped open their stomachs. He uh, sliced off their sexual organs. In most cases, he would slice off penises, uh, testicles, right. uh, and nipples, and then he would chew on them. He would never eat them. He'd never swallow them. He actually but then made he that a big deal when his confession when he was saying, he was like, I do not eat. I'm not a cannibal. I just like to chew on them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he said uh, his main obsession <laughs> was the gum. uterus. Yeah, yeah. His main obsession was the uterus, and uh, he said, I did not want to bite them so much as chew them. They were beautiful and elastic. They got to get Wrigley's over there. You got to get some good spearmint <laughs> I mean, gum. Save some lives. It's the problem with the gum shortage because it also it's him following around like some little girl. He's just like, I, I happen to like the ones that taste like watermelon. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's looking for that apple-apple-strawberry apple combination. It's difficult to find in a human being. Yeah, because there's not as much of a Wrigley's as they're, they're more of a gusher. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, that good, clean feeling that you get from orbits or eating someone's liver. <laughs> Another thing that we that he would do to all of his, or almost all of his victims, is that he would cut out their eyes. Mm. That he would at the very least stab the eyes, either around the eyes or specifically in the eyes, or cut them out completely. Because it was said, there was a superstition, that uh, the... A dead person's last images were burned on their retinas, and right. he believed that his image was burned on their retinas. And who knows if that was, you know, some crazy thing that he thought maybe he'd get caught through some Soviet super magic, or, <laughs> right. yeah. or if uh, he just was superstitious about it. I think uh, he was real dumb. Also, how often. <laughs> Brutal murder happens in Russia. That they like. <laughs> right. They had to make this rule to stop it of just being like, you know, it's like you got to stop murdering because the eye it takes pictures of your face. So yeah. just you know, make sure to not do that, huh? I feel like you put guys. The we need to cut it down because we we could literally cannot keep together a children's choir. They keep getting murdered <laughs> so hard. Right. That's what's so sad. <laughs> well, it was actually the eyes that that was able. Uh, that's what uh, made investigators notice that this guy wasn't just murdering in Rostov, that he was murdering all around the, uh, I guess it would be the Western Soviet Union. Yeah. Uh, the eyes is what links it all together. Did he take the eyes out before he murdered him, or was it a post-mortem thing? Well, that's the big thing about Chikatilo is that as he, start, as he killed more and more, his killing procedures became more and more surgical. And in fact, he got so good at killing that he was able to stab that he knew if he stabbed someone at a certain place hmm. and at a certain angle, he knew where the blood would spurt, and he knew how to dodge it. So he wouldn't get as bloody during his kills. Like Neo from the Matrix? Yes. He's just bending yes. over backwards? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he knew how to keep them alive for as long as possible, to prolong the uh, suffering for as long as possible. So he did, so oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like kind of like what the guidance counselor tells you, just being like, if mm -hmm. you had a million dollars, 
what would you want to do with your life? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And Chickatill just did that. He just did it. He took the bull by the horns and mm-hmm. he carpe diemed his way into killing all these little girls. <laughs> you don't need to go to the university to become a doctor. No, you don't. <laughs> and I want to thank you, Henry, for, for putting that bare naked lady song in my head. If I had a million dollars, but now it's about Chickatillo <laughs> stabbing somebody's eyes out. <laughs> if I had a million dollars, I'd take a child into the woods and murder them. Uh, okay. You can do that for free, you know. Oh, all right. <laughs> seriously? Oh, you mean, wait, seriously? <laughs> yeah, dude, you can just go do that whatever you want. Like man. today? Yeah, dude, whatever. You don't even need it. You don't need it. So I hate to cut lunch short, but uh, I'm going to go follow my dreams. <laughs> I think we made him a murderer today. So as far as identifying the bodies goes, because this, the manhunt, oh, we're going to get into the manhunt that lasted 12 years, extremely inept. Very, very, the Russians were very, very bad at what they did. Yeah, they just wrangled up any slowpoke in the town. <laughs> well, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get, we'll to, get to the Inferior. The other yeah. problem is it was the big nets that they would just kind of just drag along the streets hoping to catch <laughs> men in them. <laughs> <laughs> but their job was definitely made more difficult, uh, especially in the early days, because in the early days, most of Chikatilo's victims were tramps, prostitutes, people that had not, they didn't have a propiska. Right. Which a propiska, that's a formal registration of residence. So mm-hmm. if someone didn't have that, if they were homeless uh, or just kind of slept around, they were, you know, pretty much a stray dog. No one cared about them right. at all. So when they found these bodies, you know, of course, when you investigate a murder, the first thing you do is identify the body and look around at what they did before they were murdered. But with Andre Chikatilo, many times this was impossible. Because there was just no more evidence of what the person looked like. Yeah, well, there was no more evidence of what they looked like, and right. there was no identification on the people whatsoever. Uh, so he didn't just, write their names on their backs did to not. keep tabs? <laughs> <laughs> he, uh. he did not. And, of course, like he spent all of his time in railway stations, and he, much like Gary Ridgway, he started to see himself as an exterminator of At humankind. At some point, if you work in a railway station and you just see the same person there every single day, ask him where he's going. Yeah. And where are you going, buddy? It just seems like uh, you should be getting a ticket or something. You've been here. You've been in the same spot for a month and a half. It's a train station. You got to go. I'm looking at the human rats because I want to turn them into dog food. That's fine. All right. Whatever you want to do, buddy, but just get on the train. (laughs) You know, do it on the train. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and people did notice him throughout the years. Right, of course Be- they did. Yeah, because but again, the problem is it's again nobody cares about these prostitutes, and 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 that's where right. this this amalgamation of sexual tension, inadequacy, a sense of superiority is what made him the fucking perfect killer. Because he mm-hmm. just because all you have to do is. It's I, it's so fucked up, but it's like lower your standards and like get to a point of just being like I'm gonna kill this this strata of human being that no one looks for, and eventually you become like because it probably started as just because they were the easiest ones. They would mm-hmm. come with him. They would go out into the forest with him. But then he began to sp- despise them for that. Yeah, I don't even think it's lower. Like, I don't think it's lowering your standards. I think he's raising his ego and he's like I'm god of these people and. Again, everyone likes to feel as if they're doing good. Yeah. So, yeah. He, I mean, everybody does. Even the, the most sick people, he thinks that he is eradicating a plague. Yeah. He said they followed me like dogs. The guys who invented Twinkies were just trying to make a funner bread. And how many people <laughs> have they killed? <laughs> Thousands. Well, by December of 82, he completely... This is uh, another thing that makes Chikatilo uh, mm. special, or maybe just makes the Soviet Union fucked up. Uh, in December of 82, he started killing people of higher... So he started killing children. He killed this girl, Olga uh, Stolmachinok. Mm. Uh, he uh, picked her up at a bus stop, took her to the woods, the woods and murdered her. They didn't find her body for four months, and then only by chance. But in the interval... The police received a message. It was addressed to parents of missing child. It read, Greetings, parents. Don't get upset. <laughs> she is not the first and not the last. Before New Year, we need another ten. If you want to find her, then search among the leaves on the Vodorovsky Ptaskovsky. And it was, it was signed, signed, Sadist. The black cat. The black cat. <laughs> that's a, that's as badass as you can get. The black cat sounds like you're about. <laughs> Never trust the black cat. Oh, I cross your path. Oh, I oh, I swipe at your pant leg with my claws. I would and prefer- I kill the girl and I chew on the uterus. Oh, black cat having fun. <laughs> All right, uh, you know I, I like everything except for black. Maybe we can call you the ravenous beaver. How does that sound? Black cat. 
<laughs> the corn on the cob killer. Oh, that's a great one. <laughs> Him just biting all around the sides of their torsos. <laughs> Unfortunately, the letter was a hoax. You know, I couldn't pass that up. No, <laughs> absolutely. But, but, just, but it was, was. It is a part of the story because that letter is. was a part of the investigation for many, many years. And it's of also, it also, uh, it's sort of similar to the Zodiac. Uh, you know, these people who are like faking it. Yeah. He's a real celeb now. Yeah, He's in he the didn't papers. like. He didn't even know about the letter until right. they arrested him because it was almost like the Zodiac. Like it was this weird piece of the puzzle, but no one could really figure out. Because and they're, and because they're like crimes were happening everywhere. Yeah, yeah. it was all over. It, it was all over. Uh, Russia, like all that whole the whole Rostov area, they had a wide area of of who could be doing it because there was a bunch of different clues, spe specific, especially because it seemed like he was becoming a surgeon. So they started thinking he was a doctor, and then they started thinking maybe he was a cop because he knew how the cops right. were operating. And so it could have been everything. By anybody. Way, that's how bad. Again, that's how bad Russia was. They legitimately thought it could be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, they I mean, how, how good was a what? slaughterhouse worker? Right, but still, doctor could be. It's not the black death. Dahlia murders, for Christ's sake. They, I'm sure these murders weren't that unbelievably artistic and the, or scalpel -like. And the poor sadist black cat was just like a name, na guy named Javar wearing like a yes. cat, like costume hat, like in an old shack. <laughs> like, no one would believe that I am a cat. <laughs> How I wish that, that I could just almost jump from tree branch to tree branch. Black cat is terrifying, actually. Now that I think about it, it is very scary. Yeah, just a big drunk Russian man hanging out in the sun, just slowly blinking at people. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, walk faster, walk faster. I think we saw the black cat. Maybe that's where the myth comes from. If the black cat crosses your path, you have bad luck. <laughs> just a fat yeah, Russian man. Of, yeah, no, because honest, the is. black cat man of the village may accidentally pee all over your shoes. <laughs> mm. No, he's just marking. He's just marking his territories. It's fine. So the police, of course, at this the, the police were never idle. They never stopped searching for the guy, but unfortunately, they were very bad at what they did. Drunk. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, well, yeah, that seriously. was one of the that was one of the reasons why men hated Andre because Andre didn't drink. He refused right. to have a drink with him. And in Russian society, if a man didn't have a drink with you, you couldn't trust him. And this is the only good it's, thing about the Russians. Yeah. <laughs> never trust a man it's you can't have a beer the with. the direct opposite. That's why he stuck out of crowds. They even mm -hmm. said that over and over again. The reason why he wasn't like everybody else is because he wasn't drunk and harassing people all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's a, and that's the mm. weird thing about him uh, is that he always wanted to be normal. The, his whole thing was a search for normalcy, but because of course, because he didn't drink, because he was empty and all that, all this, all the killing, it was and a search for normalcy. Seamlessly track your inventory. He did in the most abnormal way possible. Except secure payments. Yeah, because it was a sense of inadequacy because front. everybody had their thing. Everybody like either f had you know they had a wife and a family, or they were they were doing they were good at something. The men were all boastful around him they all could do something and he could do nothing yeah they could and slam so a, he, they could slam a full liter of uh vodka and still get a boner <laughs> <laughs> that's a physical feat that's a physical russian feat that's actually that was a in the russian olympics but they didn't film it <laughs> how much can you drink the and still get a boner, boner the drunk yeah. boner competition mm -hmm. so in the early days of chikatilo's killing uh he st he wasn't up to surgeon levels uh, in the early days he was still Pretty hack and slash. Can we just say he never got to surgeon levels? Okay, well, yeah. we could say so at this point he was more like an old west barber. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get right to like That's Detroit a street <laughs> surgeon until later on. All right. So, because the killings were so horrific, the police got it in their head that the killer had to be a black cat. <laughs> mentally handicapped. Ah, uh, mentally uh, handicapped. Yeah, yeah. So they pulled in their first suspects, <laughs> these two guys, Kalinik and Shubarov. Uh, they were residents of a special hostel for the handicapped, mm -hmm. uh, and they were arrested for trying to steal and a the, car. And that is Russian for boo-boo and, and, and dinky. <laughs> right. <laughs> boo-boo and <laughs> dinky. Names in America, they'd be called boo-boo and dinky, and everybody loved them except, you know, I mean, they just had a problem with looking for uteruses. <laughs> Man, that just reminded me of Bobo and... Uh, Bobo and the other guy from that great movie, Nothing But Trouble. Oh, yes. man. Remember that? Oh, man. I can never remember the other one. Uh, Bobo and... Uh, little De little, little, De little Devil. Little Devil. Little Devil. Yep. Yeah, glad we got that all cleared up. Thank God. <laughs>
<laughs> so both <laughs> men, uh, of course, they were. And the the book that I did the majority of my research from is called The Red Ripper. It's a fantastic fucking book, uh, and it also has a lot to say about like Soviet Russia at the time. It's really good. Uh, but the guy kept using this term that I love. He kept saying mentally subnormal. It's so much more insulting than saying retarded. It is. <laughs> and in Russia, you just get the feeling they're like, I want to vote. And they're like, hmm, mentally subnormal. Absolutely not. <laughs> but it's interesting. One thing that stretches the entire globe is the is a police officer's ability to go for the simplest answer immediately. Yep. They always yes. just go for the dumbest or the people that are just the simplest to arrest. Yeah. And they, of course, uh, I mean, they got a confe- they got confessions out of, of these guys. Of course they did because they offered him one, like, uh, a, they looked, they had a picture of a starburst. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, look at that. You can get that in America. And they're like, oh, okay, I'll tell you everything. Yeah, they told well, they told them that jail was like a fun spinny ride. <laughs> they're like, me like spin spin. Right. Uh, but the, uh, I mean, the policemen said that they weren't intelligent enough to make up a story that fit the facts so neatly because they did uh, identify with detail the places where the victims' bodies were found and how they'd kill them. But, I mean, we all know how coerced confessions work. Totally. Especially when you're working in Soviet fucking Russia. Right. You know, when you've got the, you know, these police officers that are really trying to close this case. And it hasn't changed that much. Watch uh, World's Toughest Prisons, Russia. That, that is oh my very God. intense. And very it quick side. Uh, very quick uh, sidebar that I read the other day. Uh, in Russia, the life expectancy of a prisoner is higher than that of a regular citizen. Isn't that something? And I also heard in Russia, the meat does, you don't eat the meat, the meat eats you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, is that Yakov Smirnov? Yeah, I've changed. Um, but, it, but it's true, though. What they talk about in, in Russian criminal justice, it's, it's like 60% of confessions are coerced. Right. And they need they rely on the confession mm -hmm. like a russian police must get the confession it yeah. goes back like culturally to like the book crime and punishment where they talk about how important it is because it's it's a symbol of admission of guilt and they need it mm -hmm. and so they'll do anything to get a confession i mean and russians are not really known for their like delicacy no <laughs> they are not a delicate bunch whatsoever i mean even in uh when they finally caught andre and they caught him with uh you know a big bag full of knives and ropes uh right. and there was plenty of eyewitnesses but until they got the confession they were like i don't know if i can keep this guy uh, arrested like right. they have 10 days they can they have hold 10 someone days. to 10 days before they uh, and he's finally just like, have to let Oh, go. you like my knife and rope collection? It is from uh, Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Russian Ikea. That's where it all started, I think. Uh, so, of course, these two guys went away for a while. And then, of course, the killings didn't stop. So what did they do? They went back to the same hostel right. and arrested two more mentally subnormal men uh, named Ryapkin and Ponomorov. Mm -hmm. I and believe it. Mm. Of course, the killings continue. Uh, on January 10th, uh, they found a 17 year old girl named Natalia Shalapini, and she was found covered right. in stab wounds. Uh, her nose and upper lip, lip was cut off, along with one of the fingers on her left hand. You know what? It seems to me like we've got some Joker like mischief going on. Maybe these subnormal humans, uh, they were causing it all from jail. <laughs> <laughs> they were planning this whole thing. That, so you're saying that there was a council of retarded people. The <laughs> mentally the subnormal. Of the worst part of Russia. And they organized mm -hmm. a conspiracy to kill little girls. That's right, because they were scared of the Chicotella rise, sober in society. <laughs> Looking for power. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, thankfully they did let none of these guys were charged. Unlike the man who was charged and murdered for uh, Chikatilo's first murder, these guys were all let go. Eventually the police bundled 23 of the murders together after they realized, like, okay, these retards are in jail and these killings are still happening. Mentally subhuman. Mentally subnormal. <laughs> sub mentally subhuman <laughs> is the worst thing right, you can right, say. Right. That's the bad one. Yeah, that's, so, that's the worst one. Yeah, that's the one, like, that's the eugenics term. Right. Right, right. I, when you said bundle, I just pictured Flo from that progressive uh, commercial <laughs> there. Oh, let's bundle them. What's weird is that with all of these murders, I visualize Flo from the progressive commercial. <laughs> oh, man, take her into the woods. <laughs> so in 1984, in March, uh, Dima Potoshnikov, 10-year-old boy, he went missing. Gifted child, loves stamp collecting, archaeology, poetry. 
Chikatilo stabbed him 54 times. Uh, and this is when the Ooh. first clue comes along. Uh, they found very small clue, but they found a partial footprint uh, from a large man around the body. And an eyewitness said that she saw a man from behind walking with the boy. And she said he was between like 50 and 55 years old. So this is the first description yeah. that they have of Chikatilo in regards to But this to is murders. also, we're going, he has been, because he's already been caught two times molesting mm-hmm. kids. He has been almost caught like nine times. I mean, and again, every single time he's almost caught, it's he just checks out because he's a good member of the party. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this was his 20th murder, by the way. Sort and of, this was after his 20th yeah. murder. This was the most evidence the police had had. This is the first evidence the police had had against him. Just an elderly man holding the hand of a child. It reminds me of that um, footprints in the sand. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, that Jesus it was yeah. then that yeah, I except, carried you. It was then that I murdered take you to a remote location and cut out your your uterus and chew on it? I'm not <laughs> sure, because I poem? never get to the end of it, because I fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, something like that happens at the end. Yeah, we actually don't know. So, in May of 1984, this is a, a little incident I like to call Andre's Big Day Out. Yeah, I noticed that you labeled it that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just imagine this whole thing taking place in a montage to the, the, the song from Hot Shots, when they're having sex in the bed. Oh, <laughs> yeah, with the eggs and the bacon. <laughs> oh, that was the hottest sex he never recorded on camera. Oh, it was great. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So in 84, Andre ran into a former quote-unquote lover mm-hmm. of his at a bus station in Shakti, uh, and she was also of subnormal intelligence, and mm-hmm. they had met at a food cart where Tanya worked in 1978 prior to Andre's first kill. So, so she, she found... Saying their first date was him... His, his first date with her was Andre met a retarded woman named Tanya <laughs> at a taco truck. Yeah. And that was how they fell in love. That was the first, that was their love story. Yeah, yeah because she said he was Russian, comparatively... Russia is so romantic. It is. That remind, it's like that first pitch movie with uh, whatever that yeah. woman is. She said he was comparatively charming. Uh, <sighs> meaning... Compared to like the... Even, if you're yeah. not even like a fucking Don Juan to retarded woman, <laughs> like how are you to a normal person? Yeah. To Compared to all the rest of the men she dealt with in the bus station at the food cart day after day. Right. Chikatilo was charming. Of course, they both started re- meeting in Andre's sex shack. So he's like the most attractive guy in Alabama. Pretty much. Yeah. All right. Yeah, pretty much. So, and of course, he was, you know, unable to get hard for her, and yep. she got bored and moved on. Six but years. She got, she's, is she used to it? I mean, it just seems... <laughs> I haven't seen a picture of Tanya, but something right. tells me in my mind, Tanya may be a square-shaped woman. <laughs> She's a sub, yeah, of subnormal intelligence. I actually think Chikatilo not getting hard for her uh, is the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so six years later, uh, Chikatilo runs into her again at the same station. Of course, he's killed 20 people at this right. point. So he invites... So what have you been up to, Andre? <laughs> <laughs> So Andre invites Tanya and her 11-year-old daughter, Sveta, out to a picnic. So Chikatilo had already selected the perfect spot for the kill. It was a dense, impenetrable fat patch of forest along a railway line. Uh, and the railway line was called Sadi, which means gardens in Russia. And the woman was drunk before Andre even picked her up. I like her. So is this on one of those plenty of fish, like, profile, like, uh-huh. breakdowns? Of the th- of relationships that work, you know. <laughs> well, let's see. Like, how about we meet at this place called an impenetrable forest lane? <laughs> yeah. And be drunk when I get you. <laughs> Don't forget. So after ten minutes uh, walking from the station, uh, Andre gets Tanya to lie down for some sex time, and the child, uh, she get the kid gets the message, uh, wanders oh. off with the new doll that Andre had brought for her. Which is actually nice to do to a child if you're going to defile her mother. <laughs> Get her a doll. <laughs> so the two uh, got naked. Andre went down on her for a while. Ugh, that's the most disgusting thing yet. <laughs> just uh, can't even handle this. It's just a daughter with the fucking dirty Russian doll uh, staring at a retorted mother getting gone down on by this, like, 60-year-old man. Yeah, it's probably just oh, an old piece of sausage rubbed in some dirt. That's her doll. Oh, that's hey, sad. Mama, how did you and Daddy meet? Well, first he picked me up at a taco trunk, then I got real drunk, and he ate me out next to a fucking <laughs> bramble bush. I remember you were there. <laughs> God. 
So after he goes down on her for a while, he can't get hard. And of course, she starts, she gives him a little bit of a jab. Uh, she says, Call yourself a real man, uh, which was yeah. a very fatal mistake. Mm-hmm. He reached into his bag, pulled out a long, sharp kitchen knife, and plunged it into the side of her head. Of now, this he, makes it sort of like that Steve Martin funny arrow hat. Ah, uh, yeah, it does. Right? Yeah. So she just kept screaming and screaming. She wouldn't stop. So he dropped the knife, picked up the hammer that he'd had in the bag, and then just starts beating her face. Right. And of course, the little girl hears her mother scream, so she She's has... Like, Those are not the normal screams. <laughs> These are new types of screams. <laughs> and so the little girl runs back to where she left Andre and her mother, and when she gets there, the first thing she sees is a naked Andre Chikatilo, stark <laughs> naked, covered in blood, running towards her through the forest with a knife in his hand. He catches up to her, he takes her down with the knife, he gets the hammer, he fucking smashes her over the head, and her head, Mm. when they found her body, her head was five yards away, completely severed. Good job. Another thing, too, is like about... These details come from Andre himself. Yes. Right. When he's giving the confession later on, he loves these details and he gives them everything. When we'll talk we'll talk about it soon, but that that whole confession he gave it all of them because by then he was like cuz it's true cuz it was time for him. This is his highlight reel. Right. This is him returning the the kickoff for 99 yards. <laughs> right. Him covered in blood, scream run, cutting a little girl's head off. You know what I mean? Like that's it was a it was a big get for him. Yeah, yeah. this he is was, a real big one. I mean, yeah. there's one that he has later on that's you know I would say a little more artistic, uh, but this one is definitely running back the ball. Artistic, Marcus. Uh, well, we'll get to it. All right. Yeah, you'll see. It's uh. it's very very disturbing. All right. So in uh, 1984, that was the most intense period of killing oh, wait, his so entire career. I just want to go back. That's what you called Andre's big day out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just to clarify, everybody. So when you when I'm reading these, yeah. Andre. Him pouring, you know, like fizzy champagne into a wine glass for her, and she like winking at him, and then him giving the doll uh, and like taking the little girl and putting her in her trash can, right. covering the top of it so she can't see. What a big day out it was. So in August and September of 1984, 10 people uh, fell to Andre's knife, more than one a week for two months. And even more boldly, he was killing people who would be missed. He wasn't just killing prostitutes. He was killing children. And really, this is the traditional berserker period Mm -hmm. of the serial killer in which they get caught. I mean, we go. Flagrant. He's killing people that like he's not being careful. Mm -hmm. He's he's killing people all over the place. He believes that he's invisible to the police, and it was almost like he was in Russia. You are invisible. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, and this is you know we look at Bundy. We Bundy. We look Mm -hmm. at Dahmer. All these guys got caught because they lost control. Andre's of course the great Bundy. uh, One of my favorite Bundy quotes. If you can have a favorite Bundy quote, where you uh, forget where you put the wrench, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so on September 13th, 1984, uh, the police have figured out that he, this killer is operating out of train stations. So they're doing a lot of stakeouts. So an undercover detective, he sees Chikatilo trying to lure a young woman away from a bus station. Uh, mm. They arrested him. They looked at his belongings. They found a knife and a rope. They started going into his background, and they saw that he had all these molestation accusations against him. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fi- his physical description matched that of the witness uh, earlier, uh, and his you know foot size was around the same as the footprint that they had. But and this is fucked up. The reason why they let him go is because Andre Chikatilo has a one in a million genetic uh, condition in which his blood type and his sperm type are different. So they Mm. took his blood, because they had, of course, sperm, because he ejaculated in his pants quite a bit. Mm. They had his sperm. uh, Oh, you need sperm? Because you could just scrape my pockets. (laughs) I mean, bro, that's like what I do, man. I'm like a little sperm bank. If you look look at the fly of my pants, it's like a sperm apartment building, (laughs) dude. So they had sperm samples, and the sperm sample uh, was AB, but they took right. Andre's blood, and his blood type is A. Most of us, our blood type and our sperm type are the same. Sure. But Andre, one in a million chance. So since the blood and the sperm didn't match up, 
They let him go from the rail you, right uh, from the railway station. Yeah, I love, and I, again, I, a slightly weird way that it made him the perfect killer. Right. Like yeah. it's this thing of like that's just an added thing that added to his invisibility. And we're gonna see this too when we cover things like Luis Garavito, the the his South American serial killer who killed over like oh next to three hundred little kids. This this he can operate anonymously. Yeah, I thought uh, so. He hangs out at train stations a lot. All the time. Yeah. That, that's what he loves doing. That's his thing. And it's just a I was huge, about it's that. a huge sprawl. And Russia is yeah. massive. There's got to be no, there's next to no communication between areas of Russia. Mm. They are like, it's it's so huge and it's so poor that he can just operate under the radio, radar. Yeah. Yeah. Malcolm McDowell seemed, he did a good Chikatilo, but I really loved uh, Tom Hanks's Chikatilo, uh, Chikatilo in uh, the Polar Express. <laughs> that's hot <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I can't also, most of Mac Malcolm McDowell's acting job was to just comb his hair forward. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, he just has a bowl cut. So at this point, Chikatilo, he's killed well over 30 people, oh. but the public, the only knowledge they have is that of rumor, because the state had a hard clamp down on the... And not right. only that, but the media themselves, they self-censored. You know, right. like, they already knew what they weren't allowed to do, so they self-censored absolutely everything. And the, if the you're news... in America, this is a dream story. This oh, is everywhere. You could tell it would be up there with Manson. Yeah, you know? absolutely. But because, you know, so people didn't know, uh, you know, don't stay out late at night. You know, well, it's because keep extra watch they, on your they kids. They cannot rock the boat. They can't. Yeah. They can't let something like this would show that the communist system doesn't work. That it doesn't fix your personality to be like one of a gigantic group. Yeah, and his wife, she had no idea what was going on this entire time. I'm gonna blame that on her not communicating. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, she tried sending him to a therapist. She actually did yeah. because of his sex problems. She tried sending him to a therapist. We have no record, of course, of the visit, but it seems through Andre's uh, testimony. That that all he did was just give him a bunch of tranquilizers and said, go on your way. That's and, a great therapist. And, and, yeah. Tell him, like, it's totally cool to come in your pants, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, 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 you come in your pants. You, you can do that. It's, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. And so Andre, after he killed, he'd wait a few days before he would go back home because he was, if nothing else, patient. Yeah. Like, he was patient. And during his berserker period, it's possible that he didn't get caught because he didn't go full-on berserker like Bundy did, breaking into a uh, sorority house and just beating women with a log. He right. was. He still had the exact same M.O. He still, like, if someone didn't go with him, he still, like, if someone showed any resistance, he still would move on to the next person. But he was just doing it every day. Right. Like, he, or every week. It's like a door-to-door -door, uh, vacuum salesman. Yeah. You know, not everyone's going to buy, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they will. You know what? It is exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> so at work, of course, things were not going well. Andre was uh, not the most popular no. of employees, uh, and he spent most of his time writing letters of complaint about his coworkers to their superiors and the local communist this party. This guy would have crushed Yelp. Oh, he would have been all over the yard. He would have. And then his job was to go and make sure people delivered shipments of various industrial things. Yeah. Like he would go to, like, because basically people would make promises to make X number of supplies or X number of raw materials, and then they just wouldn't deliver. They would get right. the money and just not deliver. So his job yeah. was to go and make sure they did. Yeah, because in Soviet Russia, how it worked is, like, you would make the, you would make the screws in mm. Moscow, and then you would make the bolts in Rostov and so on and so they forth. They did it wrong. They did it very yeah. wrong, but that was part of their strategy. They thought they were doing it right. They right. made all of the materials to build one thing in a million different places around the country. Right. Uh, so Chikatilo, he went out, his job was to go, at this point it was in 1984, his job was to go from Rostov to Moscow to pick up some linoleum. Uh, <laughs> but when the, he came back and the bookkeeper che checked in the order, she found that there were 70 pounds of linoleum missing. Not good. Uh, and since nobody liked Andre, and usually a lot of people turn the blind eye because theft was expected in the Soviet system. Right. That was just built into it. Uh, but since nobody liked Andre, uh, he was arrested and sentenced to a year in jail. So the and only that's how he got arrested. Arrested. And that's how he got that's arrested. Right. It wasn't a missing linoleum. The great <laughs> linoleum thief of 1984. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't the fucking molestation. It wasn't the murders. It was missing 70 missing pounds of linoleum that put Andre Chikatilo in jail for the first time. And he only did time served. He did three months. But of course, once he came out, he waited a, a further six months before killing again. And during his trial, yeah. this is what trial psychiatrists pointed to to uh, say that he was absolutely sane because he was obviously in control of his facilities yeah. for six yes. months. 
what I really, what is very interesting too is that like, I feel like even after just three months in a Russian prison, don't you not want to go back? <laughs> I think that's why you took the break though, probably, right? Yeah, 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 he took the break. But on the other hand- Especially if you have all that beautiful linole lin linoleum uh, flooring at your house. You just want to get back <laughs> there. Just hang out on it. It's such a nice uh, His flooring. First victim out of prison, he stabbed her 38 uh, times before strangling her. Uh, and at this point, the, uh, the police did have a fairly accurate description of him. Uh, it was age 25 to 55, tall, well-developed physically, uh, blood group AB, shoe size 43. Three. Breast Care size 30 shack or something? Yeah. Two <laughs> size 43. Breast size 34C. He's still a baba after all. Carries uh, an attache with sharp knives, possibly suffers from impotence, knowledge of human anatomy, picks up victims at bus stations and railway stations, and his job allows him to move freely across the country, which we look at in hindsight as, yes, of course, that's Dead Andre on. Chikatilo. But if police would have brought in everybody who had that description, they would have ended up with thousands of men in that area and across Russia. Right. And, of course, if they brought him in, the uh, different blood type and sperm type would have immediately eliminated him. Difficult what to I find do, like, is here is that, like, but what is interesting is how, like, just the gigantic search for him would lead to all these cover-ups of a bunch of these other crimes. Like, they would solve a bunch of other murders and rapes and, I guess, cases of homosexuality. Yeah. yeah that was the, horrible. The yeah. strange thing, yeah, being gay, I guess it's still illegal in Russia. Still illegal, yeah. It's still a thing. But back yeah. in those days, it was even more illegal. Yeah, during in their search for Chikatilo, they cleared up uh, 1,062 crimes, including 95 murders, 245 Five rapes, 100 cases of serious bodily harm, and 105 cases of homosexuality. So was Chikatilo, one of, their better, was Chikatilo one of their better detectives? <laughs> Technically, and also most of those cases for homosexuality were just like busting up places that made burlesque costumes. Right, right, right. <laughs> Which is upsetting. So... He, he's out of prison. He's got a fresh start, uh, and he's got a new job. And the new job is a lot like his old job. He still had freedom to roam across the country. Uh, but, of course, his uh, employees at his new job hated him as well. They said he was cold, distant, and always complaining. His, his colleagues said they never heard him laugh, but when he smiled, it reminded them of a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> and if Not you look you at pictures of Chikatilo smiling at his trial, yeah, that's a fucking crocodile. I mean, he, he's, mm. got, he's got more of a snarl. Yeah. And also, his colleagues never heard him laugh, but when he smiled to remind him of a crocodile is like a great about me. Yeah. <laughs> on like a dating website. <laughs> maybe, maybe I don't laugh, but when I smile, coworkers right. say I'm crocodile. But again, I, I mean, crocodile, but also sometimes snapping turtle. I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just looking for love, I'm trying to make connections. I think his coworkers were just drunk and they weren't very funny. <laughs> they were all laughing because they're, you know, blasted off of vodka. So by 1987, he committed three more murders across the Soviet Union. Uh, and this is a, a little slip up on his part. All of his business trips were recorded by his employers. So when investigators started investigating Chikatilo, they were able to look at the records of his business trips and cross-reference them with records of murders across the country, which was one of the big things that also helped. Coincidence. Yep. In 1988, he killed uh, an additional three. Uh, the uh, objects of attention in the killings pretty much remain the same as tongues, nipples, genitals. Uh, but by the late 80s, much more precise. Like I said earlier, so he could avoid spurts as he stabbed and slashed. So, so it's kind of like he became like a Hope Solo, right? Just kind of like dodging <laughs> yeah. like the slaloms. <laughs> and you talk about this is really fun. I mean, this really does show you how easy his job was. Uh, he a, a psychiatrist in Rostov. Uh, of course, children were going missing, uh, but he did a test in Rostov uh, where he would drive around in his car and he'd ask children to get into his car. Right. Like, hey, you want to ride? Come on, get in the car. And he said, and a quote, alarming amount of children would, without fear, climb into the passenger seat. See, I don't know. Of the that car to an unknown location. It sounds like that they just kind of like annoyed the Pete him. Townsend doing research. 